Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel for episode 22 of Bumbling Through Birthright. If you're not caught up, if you don't know what's going on, or you know if you just have a little bit of time to spare, make sure you check out the playlist so you can see what led us to get to this situation in our birthright campaign. Or if you just missed the last one, make sure you check out the link down below. And with that, let's get into it. So for this session, we had five player characters. We had Roz, Rainier, Brindis, Jan, and Val. And if you remember, at the end of the last session, we finally made it to Sarkhole because we were going there to figure out why the queen can't rule this province. She has tried multiple times, and every time it seems to go terribly wrong. So unfortunately, in this case, well, I mean, kind of, it's, it's a weird situation. Sarkhole has become very popular. The royal wedding was there. It was kind of one of our huge bases when we had our war against Ryuvik, the bandit kingdom. So you know, it's kind of a cool place. And as such, there was a bit of a land grab to grab up all the fertile and awesome land around the, around the province and I think also around Folkheim City. I mean, a lot of the province is in the forest, that's why we constantly call the Jarl the Lady of the Woods. And so a lot of that was purchased, but it wasn't purchased for commercial reasons or really residential reasons. It was purchased by a group of nomads, the Lodi tribe, that basically don't want any more development. So they're just gonna buy up all the land and be like, you can't do anything with this. There isn't really a solution to this because we can't just be like, no, give us back this land and then sell it to somebody else. Like you can claim eminent domain, but you kind of need a good reason for it and just selling it to someone else isn't a good reason. So for the moment, we decided to put a pin in that, but is, is it really our place to step in? Should we just accept the fact that we can't rule up this province? I don't know. While we were there, another nomadic leader from a different tribe came up to us and she was like, Listen, we've heard rumors that there was quite a bit of money in Ruthgar's coffers, treasury, when you guys took over, and I think it would be great if you redistributed that wealth to the people that were taxed before and that it came from. And if we're being honest here, it costs a lot to run a big country that used to be three, especially when the middle one was very poor beforehand. So between our military costs and all the other things, we've used most of that money. But the queen did promise to contribute, I think she's about five gold bars to getting food out to everybody who needed food while the infrastructure is being built up. Because we are working on that, it's just going to take a while. After we kind of dealt with all the issues there, we decided to head up to Bayarheim, which is a province that Jan has some holdings in that he also couldn't level up. And the reasons that we haven't been able to level up these provinces, it's basically we just haven't been making our check on our domain terms to do so. So he's going to his holdings to try to figure out what the heck is going on. So we get to the city where Jan's holding is and there was a fire that happened. And so we talked to the manager of the holding and they're like, yeah, no, there was a fire. Just in case, you know, maybe, maybe it was vandalism, intentional vandalism by this manager and you know they were stealing the money Val went and she did an investigation check and she could tell that for sure there had been a fire set and so it likely wasn't the managers just saying oh yeah there was a fire pocketing the money so Jan decides to then start bringing in more lumber because he's trying to expand this holding and we're gonna set up a watch and see what happens and see if we can catch whoever lit it on fire the first time because if they lit it on fire once there's a good chance they're gonna light it on fire again we highly suspect Storm Holtzen because he also has a holding in the city and Storm Holtzen and Jan, as we know, love to hate each other. So while that's all going on, the rest of us go and see Jarl Ragnar the Beardless, like what a weird name, and he's actually in his war room because he's got problems. Do you remember that nomadic tribe that I mentioned that was up in Sarkol? Well, they're also just kind of outside of his city area, the Lodi tribe, and they are making life terrible for him. Basically, anybody who goes out hunting, when they have to go back past this tribe, they either relieve them of all their spoils that they managed to get, or it sounds like they're kidnapping them. So that's a bit of a problem. He is ready to go to war immediately, 
we're like, you know what, maybe, maybe give us a second. Nomad tribes are kind of a big deal, especially in Stjordvik, and now that we're Stjordvinik, we should probably try to talk with them and see what's going on first. He's not too happy about that, but, you know, we're, we've got the queen with us, what can he really do? So from what we gather, that tribe is set up about a day's march away from the city, but before we go, we need to deal with Jans' holding and figure out what's going on, because you know our luck. We would be like, oh, we'll be back in two days, and we'd go and it would catch on fire again. So we set up a system of watches. The first person to go on watch is Jan, and just about the time that Val is relieving him, people show up in the yard, but it's really hilarious because Jan can hide like crazy. Like, it's stupid how well he can hide. So Val shows up and she can't even find him to be like, I'm here to relieve you. Well, there's a group of people there, including a wizard who is maybe a little bit of a pyromaniac, and things kind of start to catch on fire. Jan pulls out his musket and I think he shoots in the air just so like we all know. And then the rest of us who are at a nearby pub come running. Actually, it's really funny because Rainier can move 40 feet, which is more than most of us, which is only about 30 feet per turn. And so he starts running, so he's going 80 feet. Well, Brindis has Dimension Door and Roz is like, hey, wanna give me a ride? And so we definitely beat him, even though he was like running and all sweaty by the time he got there. So after a bit of a battle, which doesn't take too, too long, we managed to take out these guys, keeping one alive, we kill everything else because we're terrible people. Put out the fire, we're all good. And the guy that's in charge actually does work for Storm Holton, but it seems like he was operating independently of Storm Holton. So we give him to the police and we're like, not our problem. Also, interesting fact, so we are in so we are in former Svinik, which is where King Ruthgar, Brindis' husband, is from. That's where he ruled before the war happened and we combined everything. So he seems to not have a good trust situation with his Jarls because in the city there are Jarls guards and there are also King's guards. So, you know, we've just got regular guards in, in our country. It's all good. So after that battle, both Val and Rainier do actually level up, which is awesome. We're getting up there pretty high. I'm a little bit behind in the filming, but I think everybody's pretty much at level nine at the point that we're at in the actual game. So. That's, we're getting there, and level 10 is our naming level, which is very exciting, and you get things like if you're a wizard, an apprentice, or if you're a rogue, you get like a mob, which is not cool, I only get one person, but I digress, <laughs> that's gonna be a while from now. So once we're done making sure that Jans' holding isn't going to catch on fire again, we decide to head up to the Lodi tribe to talk to them to see what's going on. When we approach them, they have a bit of a walled encampment set up, and they are on high alert, but you know, we've got Rainier there and he's like, I am the son of a chief of a nomadic tribe and I believe we mentioned that we had the queen of the settled people also, which they weren't so keen about. But they let us in, they take us to Jovengard, who's their wilderness prophet, and we try to have a conversation with him. Turns out, he's a little bit crazy and he's kind of got a cult situation going on here. Basically, they want to get rid of all settled areas that's why anytime somebody comes by, they're not letting them profit from the land or feed themselves. They're just taking their belongings, which if they stay and they join the cult, they can keep. So yeah, it's not a good situation. They're, he's not very receptive to having a conversation at all. And we're not really sure what to do about it. We warn them that, you know, the city over here, they're going to come attack you. And they're like, well, we'll just kill them. But then Brindis remembers that we have some Anurians along the coast, kind of close to here, that are kind of pillaging the forest. They have a logging operation going on that isn't sanctioned by us. So we're like, why don't you go take care of them? And she's so persuasive. They're like, you know what? That is a better use of our time. So at least for now, that is shoved off to a future problem. They're going to stop harassing the city. There won't be an all-out war and hopefully those Anurians will be dealt with too because that's also a bit of a problem for us. As we're getting ready, well, as we're getting ready to leave though, six of the Jarl's guards show up because they're convinced that the queen has been kidnapped. We managed to defuse that situation and then we head back to the city. But Rainier makes a very smart decision here where he sends out ravens to his father for sure and any nomadic tribe that he is on a pretty good term with because these Lodi tribe members are a little bit crazy and if it does come to war or if like they need to be taken care of 
then at least the other nomads won't turn against us. Because, like, we discovered, you know, if we hadn't gone and talked to the Lodi tribe and this Jarl from this city, the Beardless, had just taken them out, that could have caused problems because all the nomadic tribes would be like, what are you doing killing nomads? So once that's all kind of dealt with, we decide to head to Freemansky because there's been another issue there. Brindis hasn't been able to level up that province and she's tried. So it takes just under a week to get there because in Birthright the weeks are eight days, it takes seven days of travel to get there. We come across an Ice Jotun who is hunting and thank god Brindis has the spell called Banish because it's so helpful to just banish something terrible, set yourself up, and then when it returns, just kill it because you're already you've got all these prepared actions. That's great. So we dealt with it. Not much more happens until we come across some scouts. So if you remember, I mentioned that Anurian logging settlement. Well, we've had scouts watching them because the Anurians aren't really our friends and we just want to make sure that nothing terrible is going on, like they're not sending spies in or whatever. So we've had the scouts watching for a while. It's a great boon that we've run across them because we can let them know that the nomads are coming and kind of just step back for a bit unless you need to intervene. A few days later, we arrive at Freemensky and Brand, who runs Freemensky, is so stoked to see us. We ask him, you know, what's going on in the province because it's really hard to level us up and he says that the soil is getting tainted, we can't grow crops, there's a situation. And he's like, I can show you what the situation is. They discovered an ancient dungeon entrance and he's pretty sure that that's the problem, that whatever is happening underneath the ground is affecting the soil above and it needs to be dealt with. And so we're like, hey, we're adventurers, we can do that. So he promises to make us a nice stew for when we come out and we head into the dungeon. I'm not gonna lie, this dungeon does not go well. It's not an easy dungeon, it's a bit of a struggle. So we head into the dungeon, there's the five of us like I mentioned, we take a left, we go down, we find a room, and that room is full of ooze, which is a little bit rude. So it starts to, we open the door and it pretty much immediately starts to come out. It gets rainier twice, it gets foul once, and they're like, you know, stuck, suspend it. But eventually we did manage to beat this ooze, but we were all hurting pretty hard. We take a little bit of time to kind of heal up once the ooze is dealt with, and there's two doors in that room. So we go through one, and what do we find but two earth elementals, of course. Like, couldn't have been bunnies or something, earth elementals. So we end up fight with them, and people almost died. Again, not a good situation, but eventually we take them out. At this point though, one, it's late in the night in real life, and two, we all need a rest <laughs> because it is not going well. So we're like, you know what? Let's just leave. <laughs> we go back to Freemansky. We're like, hey, Brand, you know, it's gonna take us a little bit longer than we thought. We'll get back into that, but right now we need to lick our wounds. And so that was the end of that session. We found a lot of problems. We solved a couple of them. Other ones are still ongoing, like the dungeon, and I'm sure those nomads are not going to come back to bite us in the butt. Everything we do comes back to bite us, basically. Even if we kill something, like, that's never gonna bother us again, something will come up from it. But, that is the end of that session, so I hope you enjoyed it. If you do, make sure you hit the like button down below, and also subscribe so you'll know when I post next. And with that, thanks for watching.